Having fired more than 4,000 rounds through my personal SIG MPX, I can confidently say it's one of the softest, if not the softest shooting pistol caliber carbines ever made. This isn't YouTube BS or gun mag hype, it's objectively true. It's because the majority of these firearms use a direct blowback or roller delayed system, and the SIG MPX instead relies on a locked breech, short stroke piston driven action, resulting in very little felt recoil. The MPX has so little recoil, I can't even bump fire it, not even with a suppressor attached and the recoil booster. Now the MPX's core design makes for a very solid foundation, but unfortunately it falls just short of perfect in ways that only become apparent after going through roughly four cases of ammunition. Thankfully, all of these issues can be remedied with the addition of a few choice components. With that in mind, here are my top five upgrades to crank the MPX to 11. The factory pistol grip on the MPX resembles one from an H&K 416 and is pretty comfortable thanks to its palm swell and narrow top, but it's clearly designed for a full-sized rifle, not a submachine gun or personal defense weapon like the MPX. This is especially true with the factory collapsible stock, which isn't much longer than a fully collapsed M4 stock. For compact weapons like the MPX, shooters need a grip they can adjust to fit them depending on the stock and their size. In this case, the Hexmag Advanced three position grip. Consisting of two separate halves secured by a standard grip screw, the Hexmag grip allows shooters to configure its grip angle to 17, 25, or 33 degrees. Now 17 is ideal for PDWs and pistols, 25 for standard AR-15s, and the 33 works best with precision rifles or really anything you shoot from the prone. The Hexmag grip is molded from a high impact polymer and is much narrower than the included factory grip. Also, like pretty much everything made by Hexmag, the grip features hexagonal pattern indents for attaching Hexmag grip tape and is available in both black and FDE. In my experience, the grip tape combined with the slim profile of the Hexmag Advanced Tactical Grip provides a solid balance of grippiness and the proper profile to easily hit the magazine release and the safety selector. The Hexmag grip retails for $24.99. Now, as I mentioned before, the factory stock on the MPX isn't the most comfortable thing in the world, even if it ranks high on the cool factor scale. Because of this, I started looking around for alternatives, but initially only found M4 stock adapters and the SIG made skeletonized MCX stock. Now, the M4 stock's not really my cup of tea on this gun, and the MCX stock isn't much longer than the collapsible one, and it retails for more than $250. Because of this, I went looking for something both more affordable and more comfortable. I scoured the internet without much luck until a friend of mine told me that the company that makes the furniture on his transferable Mac 11 also builds furniture for the MPX. Enter the Lage Manufacturing right folding stock. Retailing for nearly $100 less than the MCX stock, the Lage is built from high impact polymer and folds to the right at just enough of an angle to clear the ejection port. It secures itself to the MCX via a single machine screw and the folding mechanism it employs is rock solid. And it actually resembles the one found on the Israeli Galil. It's available in three different lengths ranging from six and a half to eight and a half inches. And if you're over six feet tall, they even offer full and half inch spacers. So you can get that 14 inch stock you've always wanted. In testing, I found the stock got me on target much faster than the factory one and provided a more repeatable cheek weld and sight picture. Plus, on cold days, it doesn't freeze your face when you aim down sights. Installing the Lage stock on a carbine is fine, but if you intend to install it on a pistol like the one shown, you'll need to get a tack stamp. The Lage Manufacturing right folding stock retails for $164. Now let's head to the other end of the firearm. The MPX ships with a full length key mod rail that really helps reduce its overall weight and keep the little gun from being nose heavy. This rail also includes a polymer hand stop but the design practically begs for a foregrip of some sort. Now, when running a particular type of rail, either M-Lock or Key Mod, I always try to use accessories built for that interface, rather than using adapters. I do this for two reasons. First off, it reduces the weight of the gun, and second off, it stays truer to the original design. So whatever foregrip I was gonna use had to have a Key Mod interface. But at the same time, I wanted something that was lightweight like the MPX, and something that was minimalistic and didn't ruin the lines of the gun. My solution, the Arisaka Defense Vertical Key Mod Grip. 
No, these foregrips aren't made by famous Japanese weapon designer Arisaka Nariakira, but rather here in the United States by two Americans with Japanese roots. Based out of North Carolina, the company strives to build unique form follows function accessories for the AR-15. Machined from 6061 aluminum and hard coat anodized, their ultralight 1.8 ounce foregrip is an excellent example of this design theory. It features three sets of ribs that provide vertical resistance and a beveled top that allows you to quickly index your support hand. Plus, the grip's minimalist design blends perfectly with the MPX rail and its one-piece construction makes it virtually indestructible. Now, while the soft shooting MPX hardly needs a vertical grip to counter its negligible muzzle climb, the Arisaka grip adds a great reference point for the support hand for more consistent shooting and for faster shooting. One quick note. Installing this or any vertical foregrip on a pistol renders it an AOW and consequently requires a federal tax stamp to stay legal. The gun pictured is an SBR, so it's not an issue. The Arasaka Defense Foregrip retails for $30. So we've improved the ergonomics, we've added a little more control to the gun, the grip's more comfortable, the stock fits us a little better, but we're missing one of the most crucial components to accurately firing any weapon which is being able to aim it. The included aperture iron sights are made by Samson Manufacturing and are excellent on a full length rifle. The limited sight radius of the MPX because of its short rail and overall small size makes them less than ideal for quickly engaging targets at close range. For this sort of shooting, I tend to prefer reflex sights. In particular, I like EOTech hollow sights. Now these EOTechs have gotten a bad rap lately for issues with thermal drift and this has scared off many shooters from buying one or trying one. And this is really unfortunate because the vast majority of shooters will be unaffected by this phenomenon. Thermal drift tends to only occur in extreme temperature variations, meaning temperatures that are extraordinarily hot or extraordinarily cold. And in either case, represents only a two to three MOA shift. At two to 300 yards, this is a big deal, but within the range of a nine millimeter carbine, meaning usually within 50 yards, this still results in a hit on a human-sized target or on a plate rack. Now, the reason I went with a holographic sight as opposed to an aim point or some such is that they're some of the fastest shooting optics for close quarter shooting and among the most natural to aim. My favorite is the EXPS3. Now, the E portion of the XPS's name denotes that it attaches to the gun via a quick detach lever. Now, while I normally prefer something lower profile for PDW-esque firearms or submachine gun inspired handguns, the MPX is designed for AR-15 height optics and irons, so the EXPS3 is a perfect fit. Now, if you haven't run one before, the hollow sight's reticle only comes into focus when the shooter looks beyond the reticle and focuses their eyes on the target itself. Now, it's a little strange initially, especially if you're trained on using iron sights, because you're trained to always keep your eye on the front sight, but it's very natural as humans tend to automatically focus on targets or threats nearby. Also, unlike previous EOTech models that chew through batteries with a quickness, the EXPS3 provides 600 hours of continuous use at the medium setting. Like all of EOTech's products, the EXPS3 is adjustable for windage and elevation, and this one in particular features 30 different brightness settings, 20 for daytime shooting and 10 for night vision shooting. The model I prefer uses the Dash 2 reticle, which features two dots inside of a hollow crosshair. Given the 9mm round's tendency to drop at longer ranges, the second lower dot adds a nice holdover point for engaging targets at 100 yards and beyond. Now this brings me to our final upgrade area, the muzzle, the business end. One of the areas the MPX falls short of perfection in is the designer's choice of utilizing a 13.5 by 1 left-handed thread pitch. If this thread pitch sounds odd or unusual to you, it should. Only SIG and H&K use it for their 9mm handguns and of course the MPX. Consequently, the market for MPX muzzle devices is fairly limited outside of suppressors. Now the included birdcage flash hider works fine, but I find that Silencer Co's ASR flash hider works even better and looks cool as hell. Plus, if a shooter wants to upgrade to a suppressor later, the ASR flash hider is an ideal mount for Silencer Co's hybrid suppressor. When I'm not running the ASR flash hider, I normally run my favorite pistol suppressor the Silencer Co. Osprey 45. As its name implies, the eccentric sound suppressor is designed for firearms chambered in 45 ACP. Thankfully, it also works with subsonic 300 Blackout, 40 Smith & Wesson, and 9mm Parabellum. Because it's designed for 45 and not 9mm, it's a bit oversized. 
The extra internal volume of this 45 caliber suppressor makes the MPX near movie quiet when running subsonic 147 grain ammunition. Now the Osprey is actually designed for pistols. It's eccentric designed to allow for iron sights to clear it more easily. And as such, normally ships with a recoil booster to enable host pistols to function properly with it. However, when mounted on a carbine or a fixed barreled firearm, shooters should install a spacer instead of the booster. Also, while I didn't experience this with heavy subsonic ammo from Winchester ammunition, lighter, faster rounds tended to produce noticeable amounts of blowback through the charging handle. Now I wear glasses, so it doesn't really bother me, but if you're gonna suppress the MPX, you should stick with subsonic rounds, both for a quieter experience and a noticeable reduction in blowback. These upgrades address the majority of the concerns I've had with the MPX, but my two biggest issues with it still remain. The charging handle is too small, and frankly, the magazines are too expensive. But as the SIG MPX becomes more popular, more and more companies are beginning to manufacture aftermarket parts for it. Inevitably, one is going to produce a gas-busting extended charging handle, and hopefully, the price of magazines will go down. Overall, the SIG MPX isn't totally perfect, but its combination of soft recoil, excellent accuracy, and solid ergonomics make for one hell of a tactical carbine, home defense weapon, suppressor host, or just a great gun for plinking at the range. It's one that I wouldn't trade for any direct blowback or roller delayed alternative, especially with these upgrades. Thanks guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more burst reviews.